giving the gondola a rather imposing presence in the canals. At this time, the noble families in the city were competing with each other to see who would have the most ostentatious gondola. They made elaborate sculptures and gilded the entire boats, even incorporating solid silver pharaohs. The Dodge, ruler of Venice, decided that this didn't present a very good image for the city and passed a law that all gondolas could have only simple carvings and must be painted black. After the fall of the Venetian Republic, the noble families no longer had the wealth they once enjoyed and often could only afford one gondolier. An interesting thing happened to the gondola in order to make it more efficient for one person to row. They discovered that by making the gondola asymmetrical, the gondolier could go further with one stroke, thus recuperating some of the lost propulsion from an additional rower up front. The irony of the gondola's evolution is that, just as this ingenious modification came into being, the gondola started to be replaced by motorized boats. Fortunately, visitors to Venice wanted to see the city from a gondola, so tourism has kept the gondola from disappearing. Since the passengers were tourists, and not locals seeking refuge from their watchful neighbors, the cabin fell into disuse. By the early 1900s, the asymmetry was perfected, making the left side of the boat almost twice as wide as the right, with respect to a straight line stretched from one end to the other. One of the most notable features of the contemporary gondola is the fact that it is extremely curved along its length. This enables the gondolier to have more control over the boat while turning, and in fact makes the gondola one of the most maneuverable boats of its size in the world. This is a finished frame. Notice how the grain of the wood follows the entire length of the curve. It looks simple enough, but as you're about to see, it's quite a complicated process to make all of the different shapes required to build a gondola. When the glue-ups come off the press and the clamps are removed, we need to clean them up by using the joiner planer on one side and the thickness planer on the other side. At this point, we are ready to slice the glue-ups into curved planks. Once we slice them on the bandsaw, we can plane them to their final thickness with the thickness planer. There are 32 frames that make up the skeleton of the gondola. Each frame has two pieces joined together. That means that there are 64 pieces for each gondola. And because the gondola is asymmetrical, each piece has a different size and curve. We draw the shape of the frames using the ancient tool that is essential to the construction of the gondola, the sesto. Every squero has a sesto, and no gondola could be built without one. Looking at the sesto, we see that there are numbers that correspond to the numbers of each frame. Once all the frames are outlined, I'm ready to cut them out on the bandsaw. I clean up the edges with a plane and a disc sander. To assemble them, I lay the two pieces on the body plan to get everything lined up perfectly. Then I can drill my pilot holes. Apply some glue between them. And then nail everything together. The last step is to bevel the bottoms of the frames so that they'll sit plumb. Then we put them in their proper place on the strong back. And if you stand back, you can actually see the asymmetrical shape of the gondola. A lot of the boats that we build at Squirrel Canaletto aren't so difficult to construct, but with the gondola, there are no shortcuts, and I'm quite certain that this gondola will be around for many years after we're gone. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Venetian Boat Shop. 
Tom, what's going on in the bow yard next week? Next week, we're going to be putting the sides on the gondola and showing you how to make one 38-foot plank out of three smaller pieces, as well as how to bend the wood with fire. And we'll be visiting a craftsman that's responsible for building the oars and the forkele. The forkele are those beautiful pieces of art you've seen that the gondolier uses as a fulcrum for his oar. We'll also be bringing in the wood for the next gondolas that we're building in a rather unusual manner. And we have a real treat in store because next week there'll be 5,000 rowers from around the world in town for Venice's annual rowing marathon, the Voga Longa. Tom and I will be rowing in a gondoloni with six oarsmen. So we'll see you next week at the Venetian Boat Shop. Tom, what are you and the guys going to sing for us this week? This week's song is one of my favorites, Jim Chum Chum. Ciao! Ciao. Come un stisso, cinciuncia, bruttoremo de gaera, cinciuncia, senti, senti caro Tony, cinciuncia, se ne ti te metti a far giudizio, cinciuncia, anche a una desti giorni, cinciuncia, tu mujer te fai i corni, cinciuncia, anche a questo te voria, cinciuncia, ci pare botte de sola via, cinciuncia, Botte sotto e sora, cinciuncia, caro Tony va in maura, cinciuncia, la maura sei lontana, cinciuncia, è un freddo maledetto, cinciuncia, caro Tony de milletto, cinciuncia, de milletto senza mangiare, ma si a me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>